Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and we're talking this week about decision-making. What's the wise thing to do? And we're basing this off Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 and 17. It says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days, and don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. I love that powerful passage of Scripture and shared some things yesterday of four people who God gave wisdom, Joseph, Moses, Daniel, and Paul. If you missed yesterday's program, really want to encourage you to go to our website, hopeisheretoday.org, and uh, listen to that 14-minute program. Also, if you uh, like listen to podcasts, whatever platform that you listen to, Podbean, Spotify, uh iTunes. We're on all of the various major platforms. Just uh, go to there and wherever you listen to podcasts, type in the word hope is here and you can catch yesterday's 14 minute program on what's the wise thing to do. And also hope you'll subscribe and uh, get those uh, programs sent to you daily. We do uh, Monday through Friday, a 14 minute program each day. have a lot of wonderful guests and uh, know that you'll be blessed by that. If you've been blessed by I Hope It's Here and you listen to the podcast, a lot of people do that. Uh, in addition to the radio program, if you would leave us a review, we would so appreciate that. Uh, it just helps other people find us easier the more reviews we have. And really appreciate those of you that take time either uh, on the podcast platform that you listen to or on Facebook or Twitter leaving a review. Well, we shared about those four people who gave wisdom. Yes, God gave wisdom, Joseph, Moses, Daniel, and Paul. Um, and I'm so thankful that God loves to give wisdom. And in fact, I want us to say that out loud right now on the count of three. One, two, three. God loves to give wisdom. One more time. God loves to give wisdom. You know, friends, sometimes I have to say that out loud because the enemy starts whispering in my ear like, God's not going to give you any wisdom. God doesn't want to help you. And yet, friends, I know that I know that he does want to help you. He wants to help me. He wants to help us today. Great philosopher Aristotle said many years ago, knowing yourself is the beginning of wisdom. Knowing yourself is the beginning of wisdom. Yet, friends, I would counter with that that knowing who you are in Christ is where you really begin to have wisdom and understand God's purpose for your one and only life. And I want to remind you today, it's not who you are, it's whose you are. Say that one more time. It's not who you are, it's whose you are. And friends, we need to be reminded that sometimes I get into playing that compare game and yet God's like, hey, 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 don't compare your life to others. You just live in the box, the life, the, the, the in your lane. The run the race that I've given you in this lane of life. Track meets you have different lanes on the track. And, you know, we all have our own lane that we're supposed to run in. And quite often it's different from some of the people closest to us. Yet God blends all our individual life experiences and all those lanes, just like they're connected on the track side by side. And he uses all our life's experiences to help blend, to help provide hope, to help understand, to help complement, to love, to bless, to nurture, to give wisdom and understanding. It's a beautiful thing how the body of Christ can come together with their different gifts and talents and wisdom and unique experiences that they have and be encouraged by that today. Psalm chapter 2, verse 1, 7, Solomon, the wisest person around back then, kind of like the Bill Gates of uh, today's culture. He's in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 through 7, says, my, ch my child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver and seek it like hidden treasures. Then you understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. God grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. 
He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. So many nuggets of wisdom there, friends, in those uh, seven verses. One is that we have to be intentional. It says in verse 2 in Proverbs chapter 2, tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. You know, one of the things, if you're listening to radio and you start traveling, you know, far away, uh, our, our sound waves cover 13 counties in central Kentucky. Uh, I've been up past Frankfurt, almost to Shelbyville, been able to get, catch our signal during the daytime. And I've been to almost Mount Vernon, if going south, and picked up our program. Go east, way past Danville, okay? And the fact of the matter is God loves to give wisdom, okay? But we have to focus. We have to tune in. And sometimes there's too much static, okay? And sometimes I've gone to the website, wjmm.com, and you can listen online. If you want to know that, maybe you're like, oh, I'd like to listen to the program, and um, can I listen online? And there's lots of great programs here on WJMM. Yeah, just go to wjmm.com, and on the whole homepage, you just scroll down a little bit, and you'll see a little box that says, listen online in blue, and click on that, and then that'll come up, and there's a little arrow at the bottom. You just push that arrow button, and boom, you have got a clear signal. So uh, please know that in the future, especially if you're out of state, out of the country. Um, yep, I was able to even listen in Israel one day. I wanted to check to see if Hope is Here was sounding good and checked internationally online on WJMM.com. So take advantage on that and make sure that you tune in and have a good signal and clearance. Talks about cry out for insight and ask for understanding. You know, sometimes we literally, we have to just cry out to God, say, hey, I'm serious, God. I need an answer. I need your help. I need some understanding. And it's kind of like the persistent widow it talks about in the Bible. She just kept going on. And finally, the judge said, all right, you got it, what you asked for. And sometimes God just wants to know, do we really want as much as we say we do? Do we really have faith that God will answer this prayer? And yet, friends, it does. But sometimes when we're looking for wisdom, we got to search for it. I talked about being focused earlier from verse 2. In verse 4, it says, Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasure. Talking about understanding and wisdom and insight. Sometimes you have to really be intentional and search for those insight and wisdom, friends. Then it goes on to say in verse 5, Then you understand what it means to fear the Lord, and you will gain knowledge of God. I want to remind you that word fear, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're supposed to be afraid. It's talking more about in this passage of Scripture in Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, is that we need to honor, we need to respect the Lord. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of respect and for authority as much as we did when I used to be a kid. And I think sometimes that kind of parlays into our relationship with God, that we don't respect and honor Him. And I want to encourage the followers of Jesus that, God asks us to do that. Then he goes on to say in verse 6, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. I'm so thankful that we serve a God who gives wisdom freely and generously. Can I get an amen on that? And then he goes on to say in verse 7 of Proverbs chapter 2, God grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. Friends, that is just so important uh, that we have common sense and just ask God to give us that. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, we, I think we all know some people that maybe they have brilliant minds, but sometimes just in the simple decisions, they don't make really wise decisions, just kind of what some of us would call common sense decisions. And, the Bible says that God grants a treasure of common sense to the honest, and he is a shield to those who walk with integrity. Friends, you can count on if you're walking with integrity and you're walking towards Jesus, that he is going to make a way even when there seems to be no way. So be encouraged by that today. The Bible says in Second uh, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 7, that God grants a treasure of common sense to the honest, and he is a shield to those who walk with integrity integrity. So I know some of you are like, okay, Greg, I get it. I need to make wiser decisions in light of my past experiences, my current circumstances, and my future home and hopes and dreams. What is the wise thing to do? 
Well, if you want to make wise decisions, I'm going to spell out the word wise, W-I-S-C, the letter W. Get in the Bible. Get in God's Word. Get in the Word and read. Oh, just so, so important, friends. There's no substitute for spending time with Jesus in the Bible, in the book that he wrote for me and you, our life instruction manual for all of us right there in the Bible. Psalm 119, verse 5 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my path. Remember, there's an old A.B. Grant song by that. I had that cassette back in the early 90s. And I think that was written maybe in the late 80s even. But thy word is a lamp unto my path and a light for my feet. In other words, God will show you which direction you need to go. Job chapter 28, verse 28 says, Fear the Lord. That's wisdom. And insight means shunning evil. Say that one more time. Job 28, verse 28 says, Fear the Lord, which means respect in this case. That's wisdom. And insight means shunning evil. So you want wisdom? It starts with respecting and honoring God with your decision-making. Friends, I don't care what you've gotten away with in the past. The Lord, the Bible says, disciplines those he loves. And I want to encourage you that, you know, just ask God for wisdom. And the Bible says he gives it generously, and he will help you out. Speaking of giving generously, James chapter 1, verse 5 says, If you need wisdom, Ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. I love it shows, it says there, he will give it to you. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. God will give it directly to you, friends. You do not have to pass go on the Monopoly board, okay? You don't have to win the grand prize, the sweepstakes that God will can provide, even in times when we don't really understand Jeremiah 17, verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? And friends, that's why we got to be really careful with getting into our emotions and our feelings and let them dominate our thoughts and our mind. Because then it eventually starts to wear off into our hearts and minds and our actions and our words, and they become deeds. And sometimes those are good, but sometimes, to be honest, they're not so good. Billy Graham, my hero of the faith, said, before he passed away recently, he said, Our mothers can lie to us, and we need to counter our emotions with truth. Say that one more time. Our emotions can lie to us. And we need to conquer our emotions with truth. That's a word from the wonderful, powerful evangelist, Billy Graham. And we've talked about this before on Hope is Here, that we have to be careful with our emotions. Sometimes we can get to feeling a certain way, but we need to run through the filter. Is this a God-honoring situation, one that I want to get married to and start a family with? And so we have to be really intentional about that. And our emotions can lie to us. Sometimes something may look good on the outside. So we get to know a person on a deeper level on the inside. We're like, uh-oh, this is not quite as good as I thought it would be. So be encouraged by that today, not discouraged, okay, that God's revealed to you something you need to know. And so I'm thankful that God is faithful to answer his kids' prayers. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but I hope you'll join us again tomorrow as we talk about what's the wise thing to do and how do I make wise decisions. I'm Greg Horn, and this is Hope is Here.